Hey, this is Scott, and today I'm here just to show you kind of an update or an add-on to the video I posted about a week ago showing you how to get that dolly zoom or vertigo effect with the Zhiyun and Smooth 4. In that video, I showed you how to do it kind of manually using this wheel here. Today, I'm going to show you how to do it semi-automatically using a function that's built into the ZY Play app. So let's jump right into this and take a look at the ZY Play app. When you open it and connect to your Smooth 4, this is the screen that you'll see. Pressing the menu button on the handle of the gimbal will bring up this view. Choose the camera icon on the top left to select what feature the camera button on your gimbal will be associated with and scroll all the way to the right to see the vertigo option. In this menu, the goal of what we're going to do is to set an A and B point, or a start and stop point for the zoom, and also the focus, as well as how long you want that zoom to take. In other words, how fast it will zoom. If you want to see a little more background on how this effect actually works, check out my previous video where I go into a bit more detail on that. But you've definitely seen this effect before in movies and on TV to create a dramatic effect evoking some sort of emotion or to draw emphasis to the subject. It's definitely a fun feature to be able to achieve with your smartphone and the relatively cheap Smooth 4. With this method and this menu, you'll be able to set a lot of parameters very accurately and allow the gimbal to do the hard work while you focus on your body's movement and avoid the lag issue that I mentioned in my previous video. There are a couple of problems with this method though when compared to the manual method, and I'll point them out as we go through this, but for now, let's just get this actually set up. First off, you'll set your starting point by getting the framing and focus you want by using the wheel on the side and or touching on screen to set the focus. You don't have to actually move down into these menu items to do that, it'll change no matter where you are in the menu. Once you have your framing and focus set, press the camera button on the gimbal handle to set your point A. Before setting your next point, you want to make sure to set your duration, or it will default to 10 seconds, which for me is too long in most situations. Moving down in the menu a bit, you'll see the time option here, and clicking left or right on the wheel on the handle of the gimbal will allow you to adjust how many seconds you want that duration to be. For now, I'll set it to 4 seconds, but don't click OK just yet though. First, you'll want to set your point B by again adjusting the zoom and the focus. And when that's ready, now you can press the camera button once more on the handle to set your point B. You'll see a kind of timeline on the top of this menu here with your point A and point B and the time in between them. And you can either click over to these and press OK to delete a point or just tap it with your finger and it will give you the option to delete that point if you made a mistake. So now that you have your two points set, you can scroll back down in the menu and click start to start the automatic zooming. But here's where I want to mention problem number one. The first point you set, point A, will be the first position in your auto zoom. And the second, point B, will be the second or final point of your zoom. But you must set them in this order. So when you finish setting point B, you have to remember where you were positioned for point A and move back to that point before pressing start. If you were able to set these points in the reverse order, so that the second point you enter is actually the starting point of your zoom, you'd be in position and ready to go as soon as you set your second point, and you wouldn't have to guess where you were when you started or anything like that. I'm not sure that this explanation makes any sense, but once you try it, you'll see what I mean. There's always a chance that, of course, I'm missing out on something blatantly obvious here, but I've experimented with it quite a bit, and I can't seem to find a way around this frustrating issue. So again, when you're ready, just press start. And before that, I recommend leaving the save option to on, and I'll talk about that in just a moment as well. Pressing the start button will then start the zooming automatically and start recording for you, then stop recording when that duration you set is finished, which is also nice. Perhaps you could see there as I pressed start, it jumped back to point A and started recording. So that's the issue that I was talking about where the first point you set is actually your starting point. And when you finish setting point B, you're not in the correct position to actually start your zoom. So that's the little frustration that I was mentioning. Because of that, being forced to guess, you'll probably end up wanting to redo this at least a few times, getting used to the speed and where you should stand, etc. If you did leave that save option turned on, all you have to do now is just hit the camera button on the gimbal, go into the load preset, and the top one on this list will be what you just set. So click OK here, and it will do that zoom for you once more. This is a very quick way to just repeat that same action. All you have to do is press the camera button, load preset, and click OK. And you can repeat that same motion, that same zoom, over and over again until you get something that you're satisfied with. One last thing that definitely needs to be mentioned is that while using the manual method, of course, doesn't have any real side effect on the video, 
using this automated method will not record any audio. If you don't need audio, then of course it won't affect you, but you should definitely be aware going into this that you will not have audio using this automated technique. Besides that, and the frustrating issue of jumping back to point A when it starts your zoom, this is a really great way to get very nice vertigo footage because you can really focus on your movement and let the camera or the application take care of that zoom for you. So it's always easier, of course, if you have to focus on less things. You can put more attention into that and get probably a better result. However, if you do need to get this quick or you want to you know, have a little bit more control over it to see how it is as you're doing it, then the manual method still is great, I think. This does take a little bit of time to go in there and set all those settings and get everything set up, and that's not always going to be an option for you. I recommend practicing both of these techniques and getting comfortable with them if you really want to be able to get the best vertigo effect when you really need it. So now I'm just going to show you a couple of clips side by side uh, using both the manual technique and the semi-automatic technique that we talked about today. As I mentioned before, I will have a full review of this coming soon, so if there's anything in particular you want to see in more detail, let me know down in the comments below. If you have any questions about today's video or the video I posted last week, let me know that as well. If you like this video or found it helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more, and as always, thank you for watching.